before we start this video, I just want to say that you can support this ethical and sustainable channel by supporting on patreon.com slash Christina, where you receive all of my videos early, all of my podcast episodes early, and you get access to the secret podcast over on Patreon at patreon.com slash Christina. And if you can't afford to do that, then that's cool too. Make sure to hit subscribe, share this channel with a friend, and enjoy the video. Hello, internet world. Hi guys, welcome back to this here channel on the internet. My name is Christy. If you are new here, welcome. I make videos about loving yourself, loving others, loving the planet, a multitude of things. So if any of that stuff interests you, make sure to hit subscribe. I would love to have you as part of this little incredibly wonderful community that we've got going here on the internet. Whenever I do some of my sustainable hair care videos, you guys are always really curious about how to use a shampoo bar. It's one of my absolute favorite transitions that I've made since transition to like a lower waist, more plastic free lifestyle. And whenever I tell people that, they're always like, what the heck, why? Or they tell me that it leaves a weird residue on their hair or they just like haven't found one that works for them and they're always asking like, how do you even use that in general? So I figured I'd make a video today to just kind of like talk about how I use it and then also how you can find one that works for you and your specific hair type and hopefully it'll be helpful. I can't say I'm like a scientist, but out of the things that I've researched, these are all the things that I've found to be helpful in my own journey and have found from other people on the internet as well and just like my general understanding of how shampoo bars kind of work so of course if you have any tips let's get a conversation going in the comment section definitely let other people know what has worked for you just because everything is just based off of my experience and there are so many different hair types and skin types out there that it might take a while for somebody to find a bar or even a shampooing technique that works for them so yeah let's get that conversation going so first off how I use my bar you guys have seen this bar a bajillion times this is from a brand called JR Liggett's with whom I'm in no affiliation with. I use their tea tree and hemp scented bar. Well, it's not scented. It has like tea tree and hemp in it. Also super exciting. I'm just going to mention this because I have talked about it in previous videos when I referenced this specific shampoo, but JR Liggett's decided to remove palm oil from all of their products as of January 1st of 2018. So that's super exciting. So that's cool. Here's a little snippet of information from their website if you want to read about them officially declaring it. And if you're not familiar with the effects of palm oil, I definitely recommend that you go look into it. And I also recommend that you look into responsibly sourced palm oil and the differences between the two as well and decide if if it's something that you want to support because it is a very controversial oil we're not going to dig into that right now definitely a very controversial ingredient to keep your eye out for what's interesting is that from the same brand i've even tried multiple of their different shampoo bars and i hated all of the other ones so i really do think that it takes a long time for you to find one i tried maybe five different bars before i found this specific one but anyway so how i use it is i get in the shower i make sure that my hair is completely soaking wet that's something that's super important with a shampoo bar you want to make sure that your hair is as wet as possible because of course it's like a solid bar so you're not getting like all of that liquid that would typically be in a shampoo you want to make sure that your hair is thoroughly soaked before you then apply the bar because that way it'll get the best lather. Usually after I've made sure that my hair is thoroughly wet, I'll just start by taking the bar and rubbing it in between my hands so that way I get it to begin lathering and then I'll kind of just stroke it on the top of my head and then bring it all the way down my hair just to get a little bit of the soap off of the bar and onto my hair and then I just act like normal and I massage my scalp, I lather it up and I find with a bar you do have to let it lather a lot longer and by a lot longer I mean it's only a few seconds but when you're in the shower every extra added second feels like it's a lot longer than before it foams up really really nicely just like a regular shampoo I don't know how clear the footage is I got this morning of me in the shower was I did just recently thif thrift this bathing suit that I'm wearing so that was exciting but it does actually lather up just as well as any other regular shampoo that I've used I always make sure that I lather it really 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 well and then what's really important with shampoo bars is you have to wash them out really well as well because you're getting that concentrated dose of oils which is what most of the bars are made of so this is definitely going to differ between the different types of bars that you can get but when you have a bar of soap just like any other bar of soap it is like a condensed thing of oils so you are putting those directly onto your hair so that's why you have to make sure that you rinse it out really well because if not the oils are going to be coating your hair and then they'll stay on there so i think a lot of people they don't rinse it thoroughly enough and then that's how they kind of feel that like build up that they'll get afterwards but i do want to talk about build up specifically 
in a minute. So that's my personal technique. The one thing that I think is really interesting about shampoo bars and probably about shampooing in general, it's not really something that people talk about outside of the whole like how to use a different form of shampoo thing because we're all just so used to using our regular ones. But that's my personal shampoo bar technique. And something that I find is really interesting is that when I was doing my research on them, there are so many different techniques that other people have out there that work for their specific hair type. So like I have long hair, so that's what works for me. But it might be different for somebody with a different hair texture or a different length of hair as well. So I have a couple different bullet points now that I just kind of want to address. And the first one is that shampoo bars might not be for everyone. But also at the same time, what I I do think is interesting is that when I came into finding a shampoo bar honestly I was so hesitant I just was like that will never work for me there's no way my hair is so specific it uses specific products it uses specific techniques and like styling products and things I just never ever ever thought in my wildest dreams that a shampoo bar would work for me I just had this like negative programmed idea of them in my head and then I tried one that I had found at like a local farmers market and that one was not a good one for me. So then right off the bat, I was like, nope, they're not gonna work. For me personally, using shampoo bars, while it's a great alternative, um, just wasn't really cutting it. It's great for travel, but it's not necessarily my choice of shampoo in the long run. But then I tried a few more and eventually I found one that works for me. So I will say that like, I don't think shampoo bars are gonna work for everyone, but at the same time, go in with a mindset of like giving a bunch of them a try. I had somebody DM me recently and they said that they have tried like, 15 of them like quite a few and so it does take some time and you are gonna have to try different ones because each one is different everyone's hair type everyone's skin type because of course your scalp is skin and everyone's hair and skin type is different what I think really helped me in narrowing down my search in the beginning and I'm also like down to try new shampoos as well I'm not gonna say that like this is gonna be the shampoo bar that I'm gonna use forever because who knows maybe I'll find something in the future that I like better I don't know but what I did was I looked for ingredients that I knew I liked in the past that were in different shampoos shampoos that I had tried. I've always struggled with having an itchier scalp like dandruff and stuff so I looked for tea tree and hemp because I knew that those were going to be two ingredients that were good for that. So I think like depending on your hair and your skin and like your needs I would just go in and do a simple google search of like herbs that are good for x y or z or oils that are good for x y or z or plants that are good for X, Y, or Z, I don't know. And you should be able to find a few things that are good for your specific hair type, and then just look for a bar that has those in it, and give a few of them a try, and maybe you'll find one that works for you. I also think that in the meantime, while you are looking for something new, if you do run out of your previous shampoo and you wanna try something that's like, maybe a little bit more sustainable, but isn't all the way there, there's two different brands that I know of, maybe there are some other ones that are out there as well, but Plain Products, which can be a little bit pricier, and Seed Phytonutrients as well, those are two different hair care companies that I've seen all over the internet. I actually was recently gifted some seed phytonutrient shampoo and conditioner and their hair styling product. So I'm definitely going to be reviewing them on this channel at some point in the future. I just haven't had a chance to get to them quite yet. But those are two different more sustainable options if you want to have something that's more of like a traditional liquid shampoo while you're trying out all of the other bar shampoos as well. I just thought that would be something good to recommend just in case that helps. My next point is that the number one concern I get from people is that they have like a gummy residue all over their head or like a like a buildup kind of thing that can be for a few of a different reasons but the main one that I had researched online is that there's a good chance that you're not rinsing it out properly and lathering it up enough because you do kind of want to make sure that you're massaging it really well so that those oils aren't like gonna wrap around and aren't gonna stick to each strand and then you do want to make sure that you rinse it really 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 well so something that you could consider doing would be maybe just shaking up your different like shampooing technique that might help another thing that that I found to be really, really beneficial is using an apple cider vinegar rinse. Let me go grab it. So usually what I do for that is I have this, I have this old applicator bottle and inside of it, I fill it up halfway with apple cider vinegar that has the mother in it. It has to be apple cider vinegar with the mother, very important. It just means that it's at like 5% acidity level or something like that, I'm not really sure. And then I fill the other half with water and this will act as a way to kind of rebalance out the pH levels of your scalp. So it basically acts as like the same reason you would put a toner on your face during your skincare routine after you wash your face you're gonna put a toner on that's what this does for your scalp so usually what I do is after I've washed my hair I'll put my conditioner on and of course our conditioner only goes like here down so I'll like put the conditioner on the ends of my hair and then I'll go in with this and just put the reason I like to use a bottle like this is just because like the neck of it is easier to like get underneath the different layers of my hair because it's kind of thick so I'll just use this and I'll do like you know a couple lines of it 
to kind of coat my scalp. Then I usually let my conditioner soak in, do its thing, and as I'm rinsing out my conditioner, I'll also rinse out the apple cider vinegar. The thing with apple cider vinegar is you might notice that it smells while your hair is still wet, and it shouldn't smell once your hair dries. If it does, I think that means that you probably have like product buildup or something on top of your scalp that's preventing the apple cider vinegar from like soaking in and doing its thing. So you might wanna consider like a cleansing shampoo to remove buildup or like, I think some people use a baking soda rinse, but I've also heard that that's too alkaline on your hair, so I'm not really sure about that. But in theory, it shouldn't smell once it's dry, so yeah. And then the other thing too is if you are still getting that like gummy residue when you're washing your hair with a shampoo bar, I would just suggest trying a couple new ones because maybe that bar specifically isn't working for your hair type. My next bullet point is the transitionary period. This isn't something that I noticed personally, but I have read in a few different articles about shampoo bars that it does exist. I think the main reason I didn't notice this is because as I was transitioning, my life to bars, I also had some leftover like natural, natural shampoos that came, like traditional liquid shampoos that came in like a plastic bottle that I was using up at the same time. And the transition that I was making definitely wasn't from like commercial products straight to bars because I had been using like natural products for so long. So I kind of did commercial products to natural products and then to natural shampoo bars. So it was kind of like a gradual thing that I did over the course of a couple years. So from what I've read is there is a transitionary period. I'm gonna leave a link to a really great article in the description box below that kind of explains the transitionary period a little bit more. But if you're in the process of switching to a bar and you feel like your hair is getting like greasier or drier or feel like your scalp's kind of freaking out, like it's getting greasy one day and then dry one day, or it's just like on one of the sides of the spectrum, it really explains it because your hair can go through this like transition period where it kind of freaks out for a little bit and needs to detox from the way that like more chemical laden shampoos and conditioners have affected it. My next point is dyed hair. I always receive questions about that. I don't dye my hair personally, but again, from what I've read online, shampoo bars can be really great for dyed hair. I would suggest if you wanna take and do, you wanna do like a strand test on one of them, test it out and see if you see a noticeable change in the color of your hair. And if not, you should be good to go. I also, if memory serves me correct, I feel like I've seen shampoo bars that are like made specifically for people with colored hair. So that's also something to look for. Hard water. So again, not something that I've experienced personally. The reason that having hard water is of concern when using a shampoo bar is that the oils in the shampoo bar themselves can sometimes react differently with the high mineral content that's in hard water. There's two different solutions that I've heard worked really well for people. One of them is like a baking soda rinse. But again, like I was mentioning earlier, this could be of concern because some people have noted that baking soda is too alkaline for our hair. And then the other thing that I've heard is just using, again, an apple cider vinegar rinse can be a benefit. Or if you do have access to like a filter, which I would assume, I don't, I've never lived with hard water, but I would assume most people have like some sort of like water filtration thing in their kitchen. You can wet your hair with filtered water before you then lather it. You can definitely rinse out a shampoo bar with hard water but it's just hard to get that lather because of that like mineral reaction with regards to the baking soda thing and the apple cider vinegar thing I'll also leave a good helpful article in the description box of this video and then my last note which is just storage so I like to keep mine with my conditioner bar which you guys have heard me talk about way too many times in like every single video that I make about hair if you want to watch my full hair care routine video by the way I'll link it in the cards and also in the description box if you want to go and watch that after this video but I just have this little metal tin which is great to help you travel with your bars as well I bought this tin at Lush and it works really well for me. I'm really lucky that the shower water from my shower faucet doesn't really hit the other side of my shower like very much. It doesn't splash all over there. So I can kind of just leave it like this on my like shower caddy thing that we have on our wall. Like we have like a little shelf thing, but it is really important to keep your bars away from the water so that way they don't turn into like a mush and kind of like melt away. So that's definitely something to consider. If you are gonna store it more long-term in one of these tins, I would suggest getting like one of those soap stand things so that way it can kind of aerate or of course you could bring your bars in with you every time you get into the shower and then just take them out and store them like in your bathroom cabinets or something like that so anyways i hope this video was helpful i feel like i've just been lecturing the camera for way too long sorry i was kind of in a rush when i filmed this because i have to be somewhere in like 30 minutes so i kind of just wanted to 
have a nice little chat with this camera. But anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget that you can subscribe to my podcast, which goes out most Mondays. My email newsletter, which goes out most Sundays, where I share different self-care and zero waste tips and music playlists and just random things that I've picked up throughout the week. And you can also subscribe to the secret podcast over on Patreon, where I talk about all different things in life that goes up every single Tuesday. Last week's secret podcast, for example, was about shady brands and which ones are actually ethical and discovering which ones are ethical and like which ones you should give your money to. We talk about things like that. So if any of that stuff interests you, you can find it at patreon.com slash Sedona Christina. <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing my voice. Okay, I'm gonna go now. You can also follow me on Instagram and all that stuff is linked down below and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Remember to stay happy, humble, and forever compassionate and I love you guys so, so much. Mm -hmm.